Hello everybody, many thanks for joining us today. Apologies for the delay uh, with us joining you. Uh, my name is Misha and I work in the student recruitment team um, and welcome to the online open day for BA product and furniture design at Chelsea College of Arts. Um, I'm joined here today with um, our lovely panel. So first of all, um, do you want to introduce yourself, Jason? Oh yes, hello. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jason Cleverly. I'm the course leader for BA product and furniture design. Hi, my name's Lily and I'm a third year BA Product and Furniture Design student. And then my name's Zach, I'm a second year student and unfortunately my camera isn't working so you're just going to have to hear my voice today. <laughs> Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, so just to give you a bit more information about this event, um, so this is to find out more about the course. Um, and then after the presentation, there will be a QA. and a um, Have a think about any questions you'd like to ask, and you can drop them in the questions box at the bottom of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, yes, so we hope you enjoy, and um, I'll hand over to the team. Thank you. Yes, hi, everyone. I've got a lot of slides here. I'm going to show you lots of images i think it's really important for you to understand what we're all about with images there's quite a lot i'm not going to speak about every single one um, but i'm going to start off with a lovely picture of the parade ground here and what is this course about well we're really interested in material practice that is working directly with materials as designer makers we're interested in how we um or you operate in the real world as um, a designer maker or a teacher or postgraduate work as well. Uh, we do lots of live projects. I'll show you some pictures of those in a minute. We have visiting practitioners, really important. All of the tutors are designers, makers and researchers, and it's a lovely place. A typical week on the course, we have uh, individual tutorials, group crits, lectures, presentations, field trips and workshops. Um, let me just sorry i can move this slightly i can't see what it says there okay within product and furniture design there's a really interesting territory between art craft and design to be explored and we want to give you space to question the role excuse me i just need to move this over here uh the role of the designer as a creator of newness and new types of relationships with things we want to give you freedom to explore methods of production and materials new and old, to solve problems that the world is facing today, cultural, social and environmental. And we want to give you space to develop a wide ranging understanding of people and design in context. Essentially, at the end of the day, design, like everything else, is all about people. People are the most important thing in the equation. We want you to think about playfulness, creating experiences, as well as the responsibility of sustainability. We want to give you space to cultivate creativity informed by making. Here are the staff. Well, this is me. I make all sorts of things. I used to make a lot of automata, like this crab, which is an electric moving crab, uh, installations in museums and art galleries, interactive pieces. Uh, there, quite often the work I do is about uh, enabling people uh, to understand um, how things uh, in museums and art galleries can be made and in, enlivened and you can in, uh, enhance your engagement with those objects. And this is done through creating designs that allow people to interrelate as well. Fabian, she's a first year coordinator, um, an amazing artist and teacher. She does all sorts of community projects. These are some of them here. So she works with groups of people in art and design projects. This is another one of hers. Oscar works on the course. He runs a, st uh, a studio called Studio Silo and they work on a lot of different material objects, lots of uh, functional objects, but using interesting uh, material approaches. For instance here, this is um, uh, a, a, a way of blowing glass into a heat proof fabric bag, which creates this tableware here. So you get the kind of seams appearing. We work, uh, Shane works with us. He does all sorts of interventions in, in the environment. And we'll show you some of the work that students do with him later. Tim Carson is a tutor 
works across courses, uh, across levels. He's a jeweler. He's very interested in ideas and communicating sometimes political ideas. Uh, and he also has several alter egos, which you may meet one day. We get, we, I mean, visiting lecturers are super important. We have all sorts of people in. Very, we're really, you know, we're interested in people who might curate objects or design or craft, as well as people who make uh, objects, as well as people who think and talk about and theorize about objects and design, uh, including things to do with sustainability, politics, uh, communication of ideas, new ways uh, of using materials. We're really broad in our approach to visiting practitioners. So in year one, there are a number of projects that get people uh, to start uh, in basic ways working with materials. And each of those projects have uh, themes and ways in which uh, they're kind of enlivened by the brief, which can be exploited in, in lots of different ways. This is one about playfulness using wood. This is one about function in regard to um, uh, salt and pepper and condiments on a table, which we're, in this case is a ceramic project. A metal project, this is a is actually um, a machine for drawing, which has a number of people holding onto the, the device at once so that the drawing becomes collaborative. Actually, I forgot what this, I think this one is about being on the tube and looking at people without them noticing that you're looking at them. Uh, unit three is called the Anthropology of the Object. We spend quite a lot of time in this project looking at how people actually use objects and encounter objects and mediate through objects. And then we have part of it where we change the situation. So we change the affordances, the way things work ordinarily. Oh, this is one of Zach's. You can chip in if you want. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you did with anthropology of the object? Yeah, sure. I was looking at knives and how different people operate and use um, like kitchen knives. And it was really interesting just studying people and seeing how different people had so many different techniques of holding a knife because you find it's such a basic task, but in fact, there's so many different layers and techniques to use it. Yes, yeah, so you can see here that one of the things we do is examine quite closely how people use ordinary objects like keys. And then, as I say, we look at ways in which those affordances are disrupted. And that gives us more of an understanding of how things are actually used in the first place. So this can be a basis for developing future work. Different ways in which we might uh, use a, uh, a sink and a tap here. Uh, this was a really nice one where the student who was a pianist um, examined how she played the piano, but then started to uh, restrict the movement of her fingers. And actually, there is a recording, although I don't have it, of how the playing gets more and more distorted and difficult. And this has implications not only for understanding how things, how objects are interacted with, but also what is what happens if there are disabilities to consider or people with restricted movement and so on. And, you know, really silly ones like this is hilarious. I love this one where the student um, designed a collaborative toothbrush and her long suffering granny was very, very kindly got involved. And this is a lovely one looking at uh, different ways of uh, eating. And, and in this case, the student um, created um, these objects that allowed her to, I think this is a pelican, so there was lots of different ways in which she tried to eat using uh, systems that would, uh, as if she was an animal. Oh, this was about smoking as well, so George uh, here uh, decided to do, to do smoking as his uh, area of study, and in this case um, he created this object that made smoking quite unpleasant by you were, you were continuously uh, connected to the cigarette. And um, unit four, this is the end uh, project of the first year. And usually, well, we do all sorts of things uh, during this project, but one of the things we've been doing is making furniture for a community project in Stockwell. And we design objects Sometimes, well, actually quite often their uh, designs, their, their solutions to problems that the community centre need, like chairs, 
uh, dividers here. Th these are uh, digital renderings when this was during lockdown. We've actually made some of these now, so th but these are the designs. It's a group project and people work together. And here's a chair. This, these, these are all, uh, actually I don't have any photographs of, of this year's lot. This is this, this year just gone uh, in the, in the um, community center, but we took some nice photographs before we did that. And we are uh, actually one of them we've sent up to a uh, furniture award and it's got on the short list, which is great. So this is a collaborative uh, piece where all of these chairs uh, nestle together and can be used in conjunction with each other. So it's quite a neat idea. And Zach was going to show a film of this piece being constructed. Maybe you could just talk us through your, your piece here, Zach. Yeah, of course. Um, I've also got my camera working now so you can see me. Um, but my bench, um, so we went to the community centre and spoke to all the people there and they had this beautiful outside area with a park that just didn't feel like it was being utilised. So um, me and some people in my group designed this bench and built this and developed it and it was all made from recycled formica that was donated to us from a kitchen supplies company. And the, you can imagine a lovely film of this being assembled but I think the the the, the Every time we do this project, the people who use the community centre are often from quite deprived backgrounds, really appreciate uh, the work that we do for them. And they, you know, they really do enjoy using the objects that we make for them. And we often make films of them talking about how they use the objects or how they could be improved and so on. Uh, another thing we did last year in Unit 4 was looked at um, embedding technologies into fabric. And this was about uh, enhancing well-being. I don't know if um, Zach could mention something about that. You did this project, didn't you? Yeah, of course. This was um, working in Skype with Jonathan. He, um, we looked at a lot of um, electronics, which was something that I think a lot of people on our course didn't have much experience with. Um, we looked at, um, there's a lot of coding as well, which was definitely new to some people. So playing with just LEDs, but even then like sound receptors and um, listening to audio levels and then playing with the, um, activating the lights and activating a noise and a speaker depending on the human input. This, yeah, this is a sh uh, sh some shots from the exhibition we had in the morgue. In the building we work in has all sorts of extraordinary rooms and one of them's the morgue which is obviously great for a show about which has light in it because there's no, it's, it's sort of basement room. So that was a great, uh, that was a really nice exhibition actually except we it was, it was really good. <laughs> with the smoke machine uh yeah year two so year two we're moving on now to perhaps um slightly more complex uh approaches and more independent ways of working the first project and we've run this last year and we're running it again now uh we we uh work with the um worshipful company of fan makers which is a guild in the city of london and they're looking for our students to come up with new ideas for the fan and how the fan can be maybe re re-established as an object that people use but also just to um, spread information and, and to get people interested in the idea of fans which once were hugely prevalent and everybody had one so this is uh, some of the work from last year um, and I think some of this work, this one here, particularly sort of lent on some of the things we've done with the anthropology of the object in the first year. And oh, Lily, this is you. Hi. Yeah. So, yeah, so for this project, um, it was really fun because outside of product and furniture design, I'm really interested in oh, sorry, textiles. And painting and this was a really nice project to introduce those other um, sort of disciplines into my practice um, so yeah like what, what I worked with was exploring traditional textile techniques but approached it in a sort of making way with a, ring, a real sort of focus on craft and then it was really nice because after that, we got to go to West Dean, where I got to explore these ideas further. So yeah, Jason, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the things that the, the um, worship company uh, offer us is 10 students to go to a place called West Dean. And Lily was one of those people. It's an amazing building, right, Lily? And uh, an extraordinary setting. 
yeah it's a it's a world heritage craft college <clears throat> so um it's a real delight to be offered the opportunity to go and we spent the whole week um being introduced to new um craft methods and just get we just got to make the whole week and it was just a really lovely week especially after a year of lockdown and learned so many new skills that now that i've gone into third year i'm starting to use those techniques in my uh final major project yeah and the other, the other thing about this fan project which i think will be running for a few at least three or four years because it's such a great one and they do have quite a lot of money as well to throw at it so there are uh, uh students are also given um prizes and you know 500 pounds i think is the first prize they're given some pocket money to buy materials when they're at west dean it's i mean it's a bit competitive but not everybody's going to kind of get to do it but it, but the effect of this project has been quite extraordinary i think on the making and yeah, thinking, they, oh, there you they, are. There's, there's, there you are with the fan making guild people. That's that's the crew. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it was a lovely week, and they've offered us all so many opportunities even after the project. So yeah, that was something really, I think, important to take from second year. The fact that we got that opportunity, and now you know we've been given more opportunities to take from that in our third year, which is really good because we're just about in a year to graduate, so we've got industry connections already. Great, thank you. Uh, and another project that we've been doing in the second year is uh, working with museums and public spaces. Uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's a museum with an interactive piece. This is, this is one um, from a few years ago where the student was looking at senses, and this is in a garden as part of a museum in London that has herbs and as a kind of sensory garden that she was working with that theme actually this was as well uh so this person made this student made a, a series of objects that allowed you to to smell uh, the enhanced kind of flavors of the herbs in that garden there's some interactive pieces from from that uh, same museum so we're getting people to think about what it is to be a visitor to a museum and how can objects or designs enhance those visits and make people uh, take more away from it. And one of the ways we know that, that this happens is if you get people collaborating with interactive pieces, it enhances the visit. <clears throat> Last year, we worked on a similar project, but we looked at design development rather than deployment on, on a shorter project. And we worked with Kenwood House, which is quite a significant English heritage building on Hampstead Heath and we worked again with the Museum of St John and we gave people unlimited budget because we weren't going to make it and they came up with some brilliant projects that, that emerged from that uh, particular unit and then we moved on to <clears throat> the final unit in the second year where we've been working with an eco park called Stave Hill which is uh, in London and not too far from from the college quite near the river an old dockland site that's been reclaimed and people respond to it have responded to it over a few years that we've been doing this in different ways making people aware of the environment using materials from the site this is a, actually the one on the left is a great um, insect hotel which is that looks like canary wharf buildings which are over the other side of the river you can see them from the site um, making some sort of comment i think about uh, the relationship between the very wealthy city and the poorer areas over this side of the river. Oh, during that as well, we did some um, other projects where we were looking at um, building uh, furniture using uh, Windsor chair techniques. And then some pictures on the right there showing one of the days where we were beginning to examine the site this year. It just it sort of lockdown finished and we were able to get to the site, which was great. And here's some of the finished pieces. Quite often seating, actually. It's quite a lot of furniture this year. And in fact, this piece here was put forward for the same ex uh, same um, uh, competition that I showed you earlier, and it's in a different uh, category. So hopefully that will be. This is in a short list. It may be. It may win. I don't know. But that was there. You can see the piece in situ here. And there it is. Uh, okay, year three. I've got some shots from. Uh, the old course called BA Product 
uh, sorry, uh, 3D design. So these are pieces made a few years ago by students on the earlier version of the course. And uh, this, this was also just before lockdown. So these things, we, we just managed to make these things and then we got locked out. But you can see at what point we'd arrived at using the equipment and materials uh, at uh, UAL. It's a light, furniture. So this is kind of halfway through the third year. Some strange candles. Again, some recycled pieces. Actually, this is from a few years before. Uh, using uh, this guy, discovered that you could recycle um, or, or melt down the uh, uh, cogs from printing machines, from digital printers, and actually they melted down really well. And he ended up making this uh, bike seat. Uh, this is using rosin, which is a kind of resin to make lights. Somebody worked with a glass blower to make a series of perfume bottles, a piece of furniture from a few years ago, a collaborative piece with uh, an illustration student. And hopefully we'll have one of these again. We usually have these. I don't think we had one last year because of the situation. Uh, but this is where we get together with the MA Design and Maker course. And we have a day where we really kind of think about things in a very playful way. It was a, it was a lovely day that this particular one and have some drinks and have a bit of a party. College life. Oh, I just took some photos of our make, make space. We've got two of these rooms and we're just kitting them out with tools. We've just put the stuff on the wall. You can see it on the right using those panels and hanging the tools like that. The building itself is really nice actually. And you can see this old fireplaces. It's a listed building. It's got fantastic views of the river and over towards the Tate uh britain on the other side anyway this is we've got a couple of these make spaces and this is one of them it's a studio <laughs> actually it looks a bit cluttered but they're really nice studios there's different types we've got some which are kind of hot desking rooms and some which are more uh workshoppy like this one and there's well there's tim who the jeweler i showed you earlier and there's fabian the first year coordinator there's a view of mi5 and there's the tape that's another view out of the window and there's a lovely corridor with the um, marble floor. What else have I got here? Our oh, workshops there as well. <clears throat> so we have workshops, ceramics, wood, metal, digital. And actually, that's just a bit of uh, the workshops. There's a lot more there too. Um, yeah, when you, when you finish, actually, maybe should we just ask the students to say something about what it's like in the building at the moment and now you're back in and using it. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm actually in that room you can see in the picture right now. Um, but I really, especially now um, when there's less restrictions and we have that sort of ability to just come in whenever, it's, it's really great. So I live just around the corner. So being able to come into an environment where you know you have all the different tools and all like the storage cupboards where you can just find random materials and random things to sort of inspire you and then you get to look out the window and see the beautiful trees and Thames it's a really nice space and atmosphere to to work in but also to like work with others and just being able to come into the classrooms and speak to people allows you to have that bit more of a collaborative element to your work which I think is really nice at the moment. Yeah I think you're right that actually a lot of um, a lot of being being at university being at college in this in this sense is about interacting with people almost on a, a casual basis you know what you say in the corridor as much as it is about a lecture or a tutorial I think that's really important to say they were very interested in building this studio community and studio yeah. culture now that we're in third year it feels like we're all a gang you know we all know each other's practices from second year and we've set up a really nice new studio space and it's just a really nice dynamic because you can go in you know they're open monday to friday you go in work all day get to see your friends on the course but equally if you need someone to help you out with like a certain like query about your project you know your classmates or the staff are normally on good hand to like help you out and that's just really nice and it's just a really cool space like we're on the top floor 
it's nicely like spaced out and yeah it's also nice to see the second years and first years now like we're now a big community yeah and you and as you're saying you can get help quite with all sorts of things one of the things that, that there is is a booking system for the technicians you start off by saying what it is you want uh, through an online booking process and then you start uh, and then you start to work with the technician on whatever it is you're interested in uh, and there's the workshops again okay uh, so yeah I mean there, there are other things that happen in the um, uh, in the second year you can at the end of the second no, no the beginning of the second year sorry you can go out and do a, a creative computing diploma which is over at Camberwell and there's a whole um, creative computing institute and so you can spend a year and we've had a couple of students do this you can spend a year making your whole term whole whole um, year four years but during that computing year you can learn about coding and you can learn about different kinds of um, ways in which you can embed, embed computers into different circumstances and create websites and all that kind of thing to do with computing and then you can bring that back into your course and um, use that in your studies and there's also another one at the same time so during the actually it's the third year by the time you get to the end of the second year, you go off and do this you can do a, a dps which is a diploma in professional studies and you can um, uh, do an internship or whatever it is that you, you, we can find for you or you can find for yourself we do have somebody at the moment uh, working for a flooring company for a whole year and I think they're taking them to Milan and places as part of that so you can kind of extend again your your term to, to uh, your your years to four years and have this year out where you're still in contact with the staff uh, and still being supported by the university but you're off learning what it's like in the real world there are still um, <coughs> a, a versions of Erasmus called the Turing Exchange that's being developed at the moment so there's still opportunities to go out to other institutions in Europe and actually I think there are other exchanges with, with other institutions around the world as well that you can take up just some graduates uh, this was an amazing uh, project that Gil Muller from a few years ago developed these are shore rugs which are for uh, outdoor spaces like swimming pools this guy developed this uh, amazing um, mud guard for bikes that flips out uh, Jackson and Ricardo have a practice and they make all sorts of things shelving included uh, Darren Apajaya is in cockpit and he's a wood turner he's re um, working with wood quite directly turning it and actually doing all sorts of interesting things and doing really well uh, another graduate who set up a uh, uh, ceramic excuse me, ceramics practice. Uh, what are we looking for? Well, I think we're looking for people who are interested in things in a very broad sense, as well as being interested in particular material practices. But it may be that you've not had much opportunity to work with um, digital technologies or metal or wood or ceramics. So you may not have those skills and we're going to help you with that. But you can show us that you're interested in, in objects, in materials, in design, through your portfolio. But we want you to show that you have a, an interest in all sorts of things. It may be that you're interested in cinema or theatre or uh, space travel, whatever it might be. We want your interest to, to kind of fuel whatever it is you do. So in your portfolio, you need to tell us about that, as well as showing the work you've done. If you're coming for an interview, because we, we're doing face-to-face -face interviews, I believe, uh, where possible, um, you don't need to bring heavy objects you can bring photographs of those objects uh, and we really want to have a good chat with you it's almost like a first tutorial find out about you about what it is you're interested in it's just as much about you this that that day is, is about us assessing whether we uh, um, are going to move forward with you so a personal statement is really useful as well as a first step too Anyone needs to know any more information about that, it can even, you can even email me and we can do a kind of pre-portfolio check if you like, to, to, to check you put the right things in there. We really enjoy our interviews and hopefully we'll see you in one of those soon.